Gaijin American is asking, what are your thoughts on Orientalism and its effect on Western coverage of Chinese events? Depends on what you mean by Orientalism. Okay. Because Orientalism, some people are just describing in this, I don't know, my understanding, I don't know, Susanna, what do you think when you hear Orientalism? Because some people describe like this whole um, racist or stereotypical way of Westerners looking at people that anybody that is not Western. But Orientalist is also describes a very academic and not racist and not stereotypical way of studying um, different cultures. So I don't know if it's, so I've seen the Orientalism to, ref, to be referring to good or bad things at the same time. What do you think? Oh, no, I agree. I think it can mean both of those things. There's like the academic yeah. study of the Orient just like how is there the ac academic study of the Occidental, meaning the Western. Yeah. Um, uh, and, but then there's also Orientalism as in this um, exotification of particularly East Asian cultures, um, seeing it as this thing that is like very mysterious and foreign and um, oftentimes like a really- I mean, there's nothing uh, wrong with that. Well, no, but it's- um, kind of an inaccurate representation of a lot of these okay. cultures anyways um so i think that a big flaw in western coverage of chinese events is probably again i'm not really not i don't, I don't think i'm the best person to talk about these things i'm starting to get the impression that, that there is a lack of understanding about just how a lot of chinese culture operates um particularly in terms of um uh, social strata and beliefs around um, piety or um, uh, more collective um, collectivist orientations and um, beliefs about duty and saving face. I think saving face is something, an aspect that is really um, misunderstood in the West. And I think it, the West, um, I think it's something that I fail to understand often. And Gaijin American, I do still want to talk to you about saving face sometime. Um, I'm just really busy with a lot of my work and all this stuff right now. But um, uh, yeah, I think this kind of, there's such a big language difference. It really contributes to people viewing it as just like so foreign and so different, like this kind of canyon that they can't really cross. Um, and that divide, I think, really inhibits real nuanced understanding. What do you think? Because we've kind of started paying to more paying attention to more like China watchers in, on YouTube recently. Yeah, I think like what some of these so so called Orientalists, like especially from the academic area, they're actually the the best way to study these areas, right? So if you want to get hurt, butt hurt over that. Like, for example, like when I'm when I'm thinking about Orientalists, um, I'm I'm work, looking at it, at it more from like I I am more familiar with it when it comes to how they are described from an Islamic perspective. Right. So in the Islamic studies world, you have these people who are Islamic scholars and they want to study Islam from an Islamic perspective and they want to dismiss everybody else, you know, all that all the academics studying Islam in a secular way and they describe them as Orientalists and they're like, oh, this is just like a Western perspective and an inaccurate perspective of Islam, uh, but actually it's the complete opposite. It's actually their studies who is completely biased in favor of Islam and wants to look at everything from an Islamic perspective. And if you actually, actually want to understand Islam, these so-called Orientalists who are actually studying things from an academic, secular perspective, they actually have the most uh, nuanced and unbiased take. Um, so if you want to dismiss them as Orientalists, well, you're dismissing the best takes on Islam. No, but what about in relation to China? Like I was asking- well, That's about, what like... I'm saying. Like That's what my familiarity is when it comes to like trying to dismiss people as Orientalists. That's what I'm more familiar with, right? I don't know exactly who are they describing as Orientalists when it comes to the, you know studying or describing China, right? I don't know how that, but that's my family. 
what I what I can what I could talk to is the fact that a lot of Islamic scholars or a lot of um, students of Islamic scholarship who just describes everything from the point of view of Islam that's that that they characterize everything academic as orientalist and dismiss and dismiss it right that's what i'm familiar with so i'm not familiar with this other you know okay well in terms of china watchers that we like it, consume their content online what do you think that they might get wrong or inaccurate or not understand about china i mean the ones that we watch there are people who you know they they've been deep inside that culture right they lived in china they're they're married to that. <laughs> their families in Ch in China, and they, I think like they have the best takes because I mean they came from a position of trying to like celebrate the culture, but they were forced out of it, right? Um, I think that sometimes not being part of it, but being associated with the culture, it gives you the best perspective. Like some people are like saying like, oh no, you have to be Persian to be able to speak to Persian culture, or you have to be Chinese to be able to speak to Chinese culture. Sometimes, sometimes they actually get a benefit from having one foot in and one foot out um, to get the best unbiased, you know, top down perspective. Like if you're not, because if you are, if you just come from that culture, you might not have you might not see things that an outsider might be able to see right so being both an insider and an outsider sometimes does give you the best perspective i think the people that we watch have a slightly diminutive attitude towards mainland chinese in particular to be honest mm. but they don't blame it on them they blame it on the environment that they were born in so I think that's fair. I mean, it's kind of fair though. Like it, it the the thing, the things that they say is true. Like for example, they, a lot I of feel like they like, exaggerate. They 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 sometimes. And I trust me, I really don't like the CCP. But sometimes I think they really exaggerate, um, how good China was before the CCP, um, which is something I think I mean, is a real disservice. They act hmm. like like everything in China was just like hunky dory beforehand. I was like, no, there was like Not feudal really. systems. Like people were suffering. No, wait, I mean they were. Wait, what do you mean? They they go against Mao. Like, are you talking about between Mao and Xi? No, I'm talking about the Qing Dynasty. They act like before. Uh, the oh, that far Revolution. behind. That far back. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know about that. Okay. Yeah. I was like, okay. life under the Qing dynasty wasn't just like easy for everyone. I don't know what they're talking about. Right. Um, hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Kali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.